Our next guest is a uh, very, very funny man and a regular on the Howard Stern uh, radio broadcast heard each and every uh, weekday on Sirius Satellite Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, the always entertaining Artie Lang. Artie, come on out. Good to have you with us, Artie. Good to be here as always, man. Yeah, I always appreciate you fixing yourself up before you come in. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, you know what? I, I, I can't stop sweating lately. <laughs> well, I don't know what to tell you. It has been warm, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it has, yeah, yeah. And I'm a spin class instructor, as you know. And <laughs> Uh, I feel like, uh, lately I feel like Dom DeLuise. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta do something Tell about it. Tell me about it. your uh, uh, summer. What do you do during the summer? You find yourself more active in the summer? Well, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was dragged to a family barbecue recently. Mm. Do you ever have to go to those? At well, uh, occasionally, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, my family's fun, but I come from a very loud Italian family in New Jersey. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> my family aren't a bunch of pilgrims. And uh, I, uh, my mother is a very loud Italian mother. And that's great. She loves me and everything. But it's confusing having a woman like that in your life because she yells everything at the same volume, at mm. the top of her lungs. Really? And she's capable of saying evil, mean things mm -hmm. when I make her mad. But what she'll do is she'll continue the sentence and say something kind of loving and caring and parent-like at the same volume without any break. So shopping, it's yeah. just confusing. Like yeah. when I was growing up, she would say stuff like this, like, um, I hate you, I never want to see you again. Are you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that mixed message, I guess. It is a mixed message. Yeah. I, don't know if, I mean, why would someone who hates me ask if I'm hungry? Exactly, uh, yeah. Another thing she would say, this was a big one. This is verbatim. She said this one, she goes, Get out of this house and never come back. There are chicken cutlets in the refrigerator. <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, the woman's a maniac. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. She's like, should I take the chicken cutlets when I leave and never come back? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or is that why you have to leave the house? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I, I think that might be, there might be something to that. Now, uh, I, I know that uh, you're a professional comedian, and yes. of course, uh, that means a lot of travel. You get right. to see the country. I is that do. good? Do you enjoy getting out and doing that? Well, it's good now. I used to play awful gigs. Sure, you got to start off. Yeah, one of the worst gigs I ever had, one of the first gigs I ever had, paying was a, uh, a bachelor party. <laughs> I had to do stand-up at a bachelor party, which is just <laughs> the worst. It's in North Jersey for all these guys who look like the cast of The Sopranos, only not as sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> and, um... <laughs> And it's scary because what, at bachelor parties, what they'll do is, I don't know if you did it like a corporate gig, the best man comes up and he gives you inside information about everybody in the room. And he oh, goes, yeah, yeah make fun right. of him for Personalize that. Personalize you know? the material. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, I'm all nervous and um, he points to one guy. He says, see Frankie over there? And I go, yeah. And uh, he points to Frankie who looked like, you know, a bouncer at a strip club in Newark. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a big guy. Yeah. Uh, Probably a steroid user. I'm not going to accuse him of any. I don't know. <laughs> and just like he could get mad quickly. And he says to me, Frankie was at Mardi Gras once, and he was making out with a chick who turned out to be a dude. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go. You're all set. And, uh, <laughs> and I said, uh, I said, really? And he goes, he goes, yeah, we always make fun about it. It's, sure. it's, he loves when we make fun about it. <laughs> we tease him about it all the time. And I, I go, listen, man, uh, I, I, you know, I'm looking at Frankie, and he, he doesn't look like a guy who's really sensitive to the plight of the homosexuals. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and um, I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that uh, he might not want a total stranger to bring up in front of all his right. friends the, the one gay experience he's had <laughs> in life. <laughs> and uh, the guy goes, no, nah, no, we love it, man. It'll be great. So, first of all, now I have to follow a stripper, which is not good. Well, that's, that's it, I mean, you know, oh. <laughs> the stripper is, exactly. and, you know, she's killing because mm -hmm. she's attractive and, right. you know, she has these great breasts, uh, as do I, but they're, yeah, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so she, she does great. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I gotta leave something to the imagination. Exactly. Um, so the stripper does great, which they always do at bachelor parties. And then I get up and I'm just tanking. I'm bombing miserably, you know. So I, a few minutes in, I say, screw it. I see Frankie and he's eating a sandwich and not even paying attention to me. Yeah. And I go, I gotta go for this. I say, listen, I may stink up here, but at least I'm not like Frankie. I never made out with a dude. Oh. <laughs> and uh, the best man was wrong. Nobody laughed. Oh. Oh. As a matter of fact, everybody put their head down and went, whoa, man, whoa. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of death wish you got, Tubby? <laughs> and uh, everybody's just putting their head down and they're worried because I guess Frankie might beat them all up. And <laughs> so Frankie sees me, he puts his sandwich down, he picks up a Heineken, I'll never forget this, and he takes it by the neck and he starts running at me. Now, I don't know what to do. Um, <laughs> Thank God he stops about four feet before me and whips the Heineken bottle at me and he misses. I, I turn to the side. Mm. I was much more agile. Than <laughs> I turn to the side and it grazes my shin and now he charges me. I turn around, I see the kitchen door. I fly through the kitchen past like, you know, all these illegal Mexicans. And, uh, I, I hear Frankie pushing people out of the way, pots going. Yeah. I get out the door, I run around into the, the Texaco station across the street, I hide <laughs> behind a, like a Chevy Impala. <laughs> I don't know what to do. And I wait an hour for it to die down, and I go and I call the guy who booked me. Mm -hmm. um, and he was just this dirtbag guy. And mm. uh, I was supposed to get $50, so I told him what happened. And he goes, well, did you get the $50? <laughs> I go, no. And he goes, well, go back and get it. <laughs> He wants his cut. Yeah. <laughs> and his cut is only like 15 yeah, bucks. Of course. Uh, I said, no, you go back and get it. He goes, no, go back and get it. And I said, listen, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll work hard and save up, and I'll give you the $15. <laughs> I said, if you want the 50 you go back yeah. and make sure you look up Frankie and tell him the best gay joke you got. <laughs> He'll love it. Yeah, tough work. You got to go through that, though. Yeah, tough and jump for the road. You struggle yeah. and then eventually... And I understand uh, you now you have a, a book. You're uh, writing a book. Is it it's a, a memoir? I wrote a book. It's uh, based on a bunch of crazy stories of my life. Some that I've told here. Great. And uh, When will it uh, be published? It's going to be out November 11th, and it's called Artie Lang, Too Fat to Fish. Um... <laughs> I remember this is something you, from your, again, yeah, from your my mother. My mother, yeah. uh, uh, for years, as a kid, I never showed an interest in anything. I had no hobbies mm -hmm. except eating and uh, wiffle ball. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I was great at both. And I, I, uh, I worked at the port as a longshoreman in Newark, and after work Friday, I got ossified drunk with my boss, and he said, hey, let's go fishing tomorrow. I'll pick you up at like 5 a.m. We'll go fishing. And he said, my boss. So I said, you know, when you're drunk, everything, like, yeah, let's go fishing, yeah. man. <laughs> so the next day I wake up, and it's 5 a.m. He calls me. He goes, I'll be right over. And I didn't want to say no, and I was hungover. <laughs> I was laying in my bed like... <laughs> And I go downstairs, and my mother, of course, like many Italian women in Jersey, is up at 5.30 vacuuming. <laughs> <laughs> and I, my hand to God, she, she sees me, she sees this 22-year-old chubby kid that she raised who never did anything up at 5.30 on a Saturday, which was also out of the ordinary. And she says, um, where are you going? And I said, oh, I'm going fishing. She turns off the vacuum and went, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, I'm going fishing. And she got a genuine scared look on her face like I would drown. She didn't know what to do. Yeah. So she lost it and she starts screaming at the top of her lungs, you are too fat to fish. <laughs> oh, man. You fool. Artie Lang will be at the uh, Nokia, Nokia Theater in uh, Dallas. Yeah, uh, no, Nokia, Nokia Theater yeah, in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. June uh, 20th. And um, it's uh, Father's Day, and uh, get your father a serious satellite radio. That's the best thing. Your kids should get you one, man. Good idea. <laughs> Good to see you, Artie. All right, Always buddy. a pleasure. Artie Lang, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with Emily Harris.